Hey guys, what is up? Dave here, coming back to you with a brand new video on the channel. And today's video is all about bootloader unlocking a OnePlus Nord N100 that is currently SIM locked to Metro PCS. I was uh, given this phone by one of my old coworkers, uh, along with three other phones, because I told him about a new business idea that I wanted to attempt. But I'll keep that for another video because that's not the scope of this and I want to put this on XDA and I can't talk about a business thing if I'm on here. So anyway, we're talking about unlocking the bootloader on this phone. And it's not as simple actually, unfortunately, it's just downloading the OnePlus tool, um, enabling OEM unlock with the unlock enabler and you're good to go. There's actually a few extra steps because if you just do that and you're on the Metro PCS firmware, you still have to get the OEM unlock token to put into OnePlus's website to request a bootloader unlock. And OnePlus's website only supports T-Mobile phones. This thing is giving so many pop-ups, it's so annoying. Anyway, it only supports T-Mobile bootloader unlocking. So, since that's the case, you can't unlock Metro PCS devices through OnePlus's website, no matter if you enable OEM unlock or not. So what you actually have to do is you need to go in and by the way awesome tool you've made just doesn't quite work as well as we'd like so you need the global ROM and what you need is on a metro device anyway you can actually scroll down and you can start from step 11 two-step process just download this link from mega and extract it to your folder and then you want to run this MSM download tool v4 put it to other and there you go. So the other issue is some computers do not actually have the driver available for uh, the EDL mode to be recognized by this tool. So what you actually have to do is you have to download it from somewhere. And I actually linked it in this thread in a response because I realized it wasn't linked anywhere on this thread. So, if you actually go to OnePlus's official forum and scroll all the way down to the bottom of this post, there's two links for the drivers for the MSM uh, EDL driver file, which is really nice to have. But even on top of that, there's currently an issue with that driver with Microsoft, and you actually need to disable uh, driver signature enforcement. So I don't really recommend disabling driver signature enforcement on a computer that's connected to the internet because once you disable that, an unsigned driver can be very easily installed to your computer and can hide malware in it. So I would recommend doing this all on like some spare crap laptop because it really doesn't matter what computer you use once all of this stuff is downloaded. Just run it from a flash drive. That's your safest way to go about it. If you only have one computer, you can always disable driver signature enforcement, um, flash your phone to the global ROM real quick, and then reboot again to enable driver signature enforcement. Not that difficult. Um, you basically open your start menu, hold your left shift on your keyboard, and click restart until you get to a blue screen that has a couple, that should have three options on Windows 10 and Windows 11. The main one you want is going to be about troubleshooting an issue. I think it's troubleshoot. I don't remember what it exactly says, but basically from there, select that, go to startup options, reboot, and then when the menu comes up to select startup options, hit seven on your keyboard to disable driver signature enforcement, and you're good to go. And then that way the driver will install if you have issues with the driver. So without that, or without further ado, let's go a little bit further. So once you have the drivers installed and this can see it and you don't have an issue in device manager, you simply click start. It'll sit here and wait for the device to go into EDL mode. So the best way to get your device to EDL mode is to go to your settings. Go to your developer options, which is gonna be, just click your build number a bunch of times Go to developer options and the best way to go about it is enable advanced reboot that way when you click the uh, I don't like that when you open this up you can go oh EDL's not here 
Never mind. So enable, um, I thought it was, my bad. Enable USB debugging, plug it into the computer, um, allow it to connect to the computer, and then open up and have ADB set up on your computer and do ADB reboot EDL, and that'll go to EDL mode. If that doesn't work for some reason, which I have had that not work in the past, if that doesn't work for some reason, you can actually turn the phone off completely, unplug it from the charger, turn it off, hold volume up, volume down, and plug in the USB, and that goes to EDL mode. That's probably the best way to go about it. But once you are on the global ROM, then you're all good to go and continue this tutorial. So from there, by the way, shout out to this guy for the OnePlus tool. It is really nice. I forgot all about the SCR CPY uh, program. And that's what I'm using for showing my screen. But I'm actually going to use my own script for the uh, OEM unlock enable. So very simple script. I found this out a little while ago with another device that if you just disable this application, it will actually ungray out uh, OEM unlock on these devices. But there's an extra step, it seems like, with the... Uh, N100s. So first of all, run my script. This script assumes you're running ADB system-wide. If you're not, you need to put this script into the same folder as your ADB.exe. So hit enter. That will disable the app once you hit enter the first time. And then it gives you instructions. Go to your installed apps and settings, show system apps, uh, scroll down to the app and select it. It should be disabled. Select storage and delete all data for the app. Go back to developer options and OEM unlock should be possible to enable. And that is actually the case. Oh. So, like I said, apps and notifications, go to app info, use the top to show system apps, scroll down until you are at the app that is disabled, Come on, where is it? There it is. And you want to hit force stop if this is blue. If this is blue, hit force stop. And then from there, go to your storage, clear storage. Go back to your developer options. I think you need to make sure you're on Wi-Fi as well. I'm not 100% on that. I just have always had it connected. And then this will be possible to enable. For me, my bootloader is already unlocked, so this stays grayed out. But from there, it's very easy to unlock your bootloader, which is super nice. So, remember that little menu? Oh my god, no, I don't want Google Assistant. Here we go. So you want to do the bootloader option, which that this is going to disconnect it from my computer, so you're going to just have to hear me out from here on. Um, you can actually... Oh, anyway... We're going to close that. So I am now in bootloader mode. If your phone is not detected, so go ADB or fast boot devices. If it doesn't come up, you need to go in and, well, this isn't it because my device is detected. Um, you need to go in and basically update driver, browse, go here, select Android device, and click bootloader interface. The device I clicked is not bootloader interface, so I'm not going to do that. But from there, it will detect it, and you can do fastboot devices again, and it shows up. So now, from here, you do fastboot OEM unlock. My device is already unlocked. It'll bring up a pop-up on your screen, and you can click unlock this device. It will fully uh, wipe the device. Then let it fully reboot, or you will run into options. From there, once it reboots, you can actually just get the oppo decrypt file, open up the uh, decrypt this file, pull out the boot uh, file. I'll actually, I'll do it real quick. Um, give me one second. I don't know why I paused it, but you do need Python installed on your system for this. You get Python from lpythono website python 3.8 is what you need installed you want to install it system-wide very simple to install just scroll down until you see the executable uh file right there download it select to add it to your system path and then you're good to go 
From there, you want to extract this file. You want to just go, I think it's QC decrypt. I'm just going to do this one. That's not right. All right, open CMD in this folder. Do Python. Oh, you know what I forgot is we need PIP3 requirements.txt. I forget how to do this. Luckily, there's a readme. Wow, Notepad++ is mad at me. There we go. So installation, Python 3, bash install. Oh, we do, my bad. 3 install dash R. There we go. Then hit enter. Now it will install all the required files for this tool to run successfully. And then we want to extract a uh, an, extract a file from there. Once this is done downloading and installing the proper files, you basically use this Python 3 uh, OPS crypto.py decrypt and then put your OPS file. Super simple. So I'm going to let this finish up real quick and then I'll come back. I have realized you need to run CMD as admin for that to work, for this command to work, or else it just gets stuck frozen at the screen you just saw. But it's currently installing and running the setup for it, and it also did download the other file. So in a moment, it should be done, and we can decrypt the OnePlus file, which, like I said, super simple. You do Python 3 ops crypto.py um, you do decrypt and then you drag and drop this onto here I believe that's right yep and then you just hit enter oh I spelled Python wrong good lord you can tell I need to go to bed I've been at this phone for hours why can't can, do I have to just type Python Ah, there it goes. Yeah, just type Python. I guess it just kind of depends on your setup. But as you can see, it's currently extracting all these files. If I hit F5, don't hit F5, don't be in the folder while it's doing it. It makes you run super slow and stupid. Anyway, these are the files that have been extracted so far. Super's going to take a while. System will take a while. It is what it is. As you can see, they are here, though. So... The bin dot uh, IMG or boot dot IMG is the one we are going to end up wanting, and we are going to need Magisk. We need the Magisk file APK if we want to be able to actually successfully root. Which there is another way to root, but I'm not going to go into that. There is a TWRP for this device, but it is kind of unstable. You can boot TWRP and then just flash uh, this file. You just make it .zip instead of .apk, and then flash the zip through TWRP, and that will root your device. Or you just install the APK by sideloading with ADB install, and then do a magisk patch, and then flash the boot.img. That's probably the safest bet because right now there's not much support behind this TWRP. So it doesn't work very well, unfortunately. But under the extract, it's trying, but it's writing stuff. Where's boot? Ah, boot just came. Uh, um, that didn't sound right. So we're going to extract the boot file to right here. We're going to say stock boot and now we're going to launch the device we're going to turn it on so now that we have our bootloader unlocked we are going to turn on the phone we are going to adb install magisk.apk once the device pops up remember you need to have usb debugging enabled for adb installed to work this thing doesn't take too long to boot, so I'm not going to bother pausing the video just to stop it. 
There we go. And booted. I'm going to unlock the screen so it allows me to APK install. And then the other thing is we need to put this boot image on the internal storage. So just pull down your notification thing, change it to file transfer, and then you can select your device. Just put the boot image on the root. And from there, open up Magisk on your phone, which I'll show you real quick. I'll just run this thing again because it's easier than me going and finding my own copy of SCR copy. So what we want to do is open Magisk. We need to go, not settings, we need to go install, allow, select patch and modify it. And then you want to, if it doesn't show you system uh, storage, you just do this, or uh, uh, yeah, internal storage, you just do that. Select your boot image, click let's go. It's going to unpack the boot image, it's going to check the RAM disk status, reapply, it's going to add all the super user stuff. And then from here, you will have a boot image that can be used for rooting your device. So you just pull this, I'll just copy this out of here. So we have our boot image. And now what we can do is just reboot to bootloader. I keep forgetting that power buttons are not power buttons anymore. So reboot bootloader. Yeah, I know. There we go, and then just do fast boot, flash boot. And now you are completely bootloader unlocked and rooted on a Metro PCS SIM locked OnePlus Nord N100. Congratulations, just restart your phone, you are rooted. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial. Pretty easy, took it that one step further because I wanted this thing rooted, but I really wanna get a GSI ROM working on it. And when I do finally get one, I will let you guys know. So anyway, I'll talk to you guys later. Peace out.